Hi, uh, I'm back again at the Emily Oaks Greenhouse. Uh, last week I talked about seed propagation of native plants and some uh, culture of uh, seedlings from, uh, from, from those seeds. And this week I'm going to turn to the topic of asexual propagation. Um, I also propagate uh, native shrubs and small trees uh, for our plant sale and for planting here on our grounds at Emily Oaks. And I start that process here in the greenhouse, but I move it out to a nursery uh, that I've got uh, also uh, just outside the greenhouse. Unfortunately, this time of year, everything looks like sticks, so I can't show you the, green, uh, the nursery, uh, but I propagate approximately 500 uh, trees and shrubs each year and sell and plant those, uh, some of those on the grounds. Um, so here are uh, some of the basics um, uh, techniques that I use. So I talked about seed propagation. I also um, um, dig up volunteers. So a lot of times under uh, uh, plants, especially the, uh, uh, the red bud and the uh, uh, wild currants, there's a, the seeds germinate nat naturally and produce a, a, a flush of small plants. So those plants are perfectly good nursery specimens. I dig them up, I put them in nursery pots and keep them uh, safe from rabbits and, and deer in, the, in an enclosed nursery. But then I, plant, I propagate other plants uh, from, uh, uh, by division and, and things like this uh, cyclamen. You can just go in and divide, uh, divide it up into multiple plants. Uh, I'm sure any of you who've had a garden or keep house plants have done propagation by division. Uh, I also um, propagate from uh, uh, root cuttings, so especially uh, plants like uh, sumac and uh, prickly ash uh, do great from just little cuts of, seed, of roots. I start them in a tray uh, like this and pretty soon there's lots of little uh, shoots coming up that it can then transfer into pots. Um, I also uh, uh, dig up suckers, so a lot of our plants, uh, clumping shrubs such as uh, hazelnut uh, do very well from uh, just digging up the, the suckers. They're already rooted, they can go into pots and uh, uh, produce uh, many more. Uh, finally, I do some uh, layering, and what that means is that uh, if you're talking about tip layering, uh, you see that with, uh, with roses and uh, uh, blackberries frequently, where the tip comes into contact with the soil, uh, that tip will form new roots and new shoots and, and affect a new plant. That's another form of asexual propagation. Um, and then what I'm about to demonstrate here is uh, stem cuttings. And I propagate approximately 10 different native uh, shrubs from uh, stem cuttings, and what I'm propagating right now is uh, red osier dogwood. Uh, this is a beautiful native plant. It, it, it's adapted to a wide variety of habitats in our area. It likes it, likes it wet at least once a year, uh, but it will even grow on upland uh, uh, habitats uh, as long as it, as it gets uh, its roots wet at least once a year. Now this plant has a lovely red stem, uh, and it's turning bright, bright red now uh, as, uh, as late winter starts. And uh, I cut these uh, this morning, I cut uh, about uh, 10 uh, um, sets of, uh, of stems, different lengths. Uh, what I was looking for was um, uh, plants with uh, inner nodes that were fairly close together. I was looking for a nice red color in the stem. Uh, healthy looking uh, specimen and I also went to, I, I made about 12 different uh, stem cuts and I went to different plants because each one of these now that I'm going to be cutting, uh, uh, making cuttings from, uh, all of these cuttings will have identical genetics. So I wanted to diversify the mix um, by taking cuttings from many different plants and the uh, I basically went in and cut, uh, I pruned these plants. I cut one stem from each of about 10 plants to make a, uh, what will be a bucket full of, uh, of cuttings. 
Now these cuttings, uh, as I'll explain, will go into uh, underground. Uh, it's late February now. Uh, late winter is a great time to make cuttings, although this uh, plant will uh, propagate from uh, cuttings just about any time of year. Uh, and what I'm doing it now is cutting, finding a node, making a straight cut just below that node, and then working up the stem, oh, usually six to ten inches. This might be a little more. I've got a lot of this material, so I'm not being too fussy with it. And then making a diagonal cut above the stem, or into the stem, above another node. So there's a cutting. Uh, that's a pretty fat, chubby cutting, but that's fine. As I work uh, down the stem, uh, you'll see that the cuttings get progressively smaller and this plant just wants to root so it doesn't care really and it will root from uh, stem cuttings oh a half inch or so down to uh, less than a quarter less than pencil width and now I'm working down the stem I'm trimming the uh, and I did not make a straight cut above the note on this one so I'm going to do that now and I'm just going to trim off this a uh, little bit here, keep going, make my straight cut. I'm also going to trim off this dead material at the end. And uh, I don't think you can be too f uh, worry about being too fussy with this plant. This plant is an amazing uh, plant and it will want to propagate almost no matter what you do. Now what I'm going to do is going to grab up the bundle of cuttings I just made. I've prepared ahead of time a, uh, a rooting hormone. Now this product's called uh, ah, Root and Grow. Um, and it is composed of two different rooting hormones. Uh, the main one is IPA, which you've read about in your assignment. And it comes in a concentration of 1% IPA. So what I've done is dilute it uh, by, uh, down to a 3% solution. And what I'm going to do is simply dip the, uh, dip the stems, dip the cuttings into the rooting hormone. Now I'm going to, actually in practice, I'm going to make this a, uh, a bundle of about 20 stems. But just to give you quickly I, the idea of what I'm doing, I'm going to wrap a rubber band around it and then insert it into this, uh, this five gallon bucket. And you can probably see other, uh, other cuttings poking out the top. This bucket has about three inches of damp uh, sphagnum peat moss inside of it. And what I'm doing is just putting the bundles into the bucket, into the wet peat moss. What I'm gonna do then is put this bucket into my nursery on its side cover it up with um, um, wood chips and let it out, uh, leave it underground until probably uh, middle of May, the beginning of the growing season. Uh, what I expect to see then is that these, uh, uh, the majority of these cuttings, not every single one, but probably 75% of these cuttings will have nice little root systems on them. And then I will put those uh, uh, into uh, media, into a uh, soil plus uh, 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 peat moss plus fertilizer uh, mix in nursery pots. Probably start them out in one or two gallon pots. Put them out in the nursery and by next year, uh, fall of next year, I will have a nice size uh, red osier dogwood plants ready to plant out in our, on our grounds or uh, sell at our plant sale. So uh, I hope this was informative to you. I'll be talking to you some more tomorrow uh, in my lectures on the subject of asexual propagation. I'll see you then.